Hey guys, welcome back. Get hyped because it is lower bracket final time. The winner of this goes to the grand finals and it's going to be Chonger against Leda. How you feeling about this one, man? Feeling pretty good. The Thai crowd certainly love their man, Leda. They oh, are yeah. cheering like crazy. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the crowd is going nuts. Cheering out his name, chanting out his name, I should say. Leda, Leda. Yeah. Obviously, Leda is actually the word for... Radar yeah. in Thai. Didn't realize that from before. And mm. just kind of like a bit of a different pron pronunciation. Sometimes, yeah. you know, us being half Japanese, we know how you know, the, the letters and the, the sounds L's and can the be... R's can get confused. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's an Asian thing. Don't guys, you guys don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, we have we've gone through five best of fives today. We are down to the wire. It is the lower bracket finals, followed by the grand finals. Only three players left. And by the way, wh whoever wins here... When they play in the grand finals, they have to win twice. So yep. a bit of an advantage there for Shy. No, you got to keep final. it fair. You know, everyone who's been who's dropped down to the lower bracket had has had that second life. Right. So the guy who, who's you know hasn't lost throughout the tournament needs to get that chance. Yeah, I think you know a little bit about that. It being from the Australia region, when I think in winter they had they actually had the loser from the losers bracket just win and then yeah nothing else just <laughs> i guess he's going What's to the apex about, championships man? yeah that's a bit problematic sometimes you feel yeah. a little bit cheated if you came from the upper bracket good thing those two guys were friends but uh yeah uh that's that story aside we do have two really good players for you right now it's going to be chonger from the upper bracket which actually we cast it early we yeah we, we did cast the exact match where chonger fell down and uh, we have Leda obviously coming up from the lower bracket well not up yet quite yet but uh you just casted him right now so you just know these players left and right, back and forth. And we have a double shaman ban for these players. And we had Leda with the mid-range shaman. Not really, can't really call it totem shaman. Mm -hmm. And as we take a look at Chonger from Malaysia. I think it's on team M8, if I remember correctly here. Yeah, and, that's right. And uh, here is Leda on the left side. Leda, by the way, he is already going to the APAC championship. Already qualified for that. So the man is on fire. At yeah. the moment, certainly representing Thailand as well as possible. Can't even think of another Thai player, honestly, who is has won at this rate, ever. Yeah, I mean, the Thai client is, is also pretty new itself. Right. So I'm actually kind of surprised that the Thai players are doing so well. This, well, this is, Thai player. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I suppose. I mean, we had some, some Thai players make it re reasonably deep in this tournament as well. Right. Yeah, being obviously in Thailand right now in Bangkok at the uh, Pan Tip Sports Esports Arena. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, we had a lot of pl Thai players come out and obviously representing as best as they can. But certainly you can't argue that uh, Leda is representing the best of those players right mm. now on an absolute tear. And we'll see if he can continue that against Chonger. And Chonger's been doing pretty well for himself as well. Doesn't want to fall down. But we are going to into the game number one. It's going to be Druid versus two. Druid. Why not? Get those yogs out there. Although I think you mentioned earlier, let us not have yeah, the no. yog minister. I mean, the testicular fortitude on this guy, right? Like <laughs> when everybody is running yog, is trying to squeeze yog into every deck possible. Even control warriors, you know, you see them sometimes running a yog. For this guy to just be like, "Nah, guys, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm confident enough in my ability to play the token druid, um, just by itself." It's uh, pretty impressive, man. Yeah, I don't think I could omit Yogg from my deck. I feel like the instant my opponent plays Yogg, I'm getting triple power blasted to my face. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, he is going to go with that. This build of his, well, not the exact build, but in general, just having the late game options, but not Yogg itself, is something that Team G2 with Life Coach and Tice have, uh, they kind of popularized early on. Yeah. And it, it's a bit more consistency, right? You're not worrying about whether y'all can bring you back. There is the nice, like, fail safe where if you fall behind on board, you can just get back yeah. in a, you know, just with one card essentially. But, you know, sometimes it fails you. And in other cases, you don't, you haven't played enough spells. You just, that's not really an option. Maybe you just ramped the entire time, played all minions, you fall, oh, yeah. see yourself fall behind, and you're like, well, I have a five spell Yogg and I have to do it, and then you just lose. So it certainly makes sense to just have those late game options instead. Do you think uh, the Malagos kind of variant of, of the token druid has an advantage over the more traditional token druid? Well, the issue is that they don't have the taunts to kind of get in the way right. uh, if they are facing some damage. But that said, since there isn't really much burst damage, I would say that the Malagos druid has a bit of an edge because any damage that they can get in really helps them push the damage later on right. and kind of uh, have the finishing blow with, uh, with the Malagos in the end there. 
Yeah, it feels great to just smell it. Goes moonfire, moonfire, living roots, and right. it's like boom. I think yeah. the, the biggest thing though is that there's that fear, right? If you're playing yeah, against yeah, yeah. if you're playing against Malagos, it's like playing against the old combo druid. You, you right. couldn't even you, you don't want to take any damage. Sometimes you can make a better play as far as the board is concerned by you know face taking damage here and there, and maybe playing a little, little bit more ballsy for lack of a better word. And what you can do is you know back in the old days you couldn't really do that because even 20 damage wasn't safe, right? If one minion stuck on the board like a right. shredder, you would just die. And the same thing, it's kind of a similar thing here with the Malagos Druid. You don't really want to be taking damage because you could just die to Malagos. That all said, Chong has already used his Moonfire on the last turn, so a bit of a, you know, less fear, I would say, for Arletta going into this. But he has picked up quite the hand here, and Innervate would serve him super well. On the side of Chong, or not really much to do. Probably gonna see an Azure Drake on this turn. Banjo doesn't seem like it's really worth it. He could play it just to force out a response from, from his opponent, but at seven mana, you're not really forcing that much out. You're not really, the opportunity cost isn't that much. Yeah, and you definitely want to have value. <laughs> you want to squeeze value out of the Fandral. When you have two Wraths already in hand, he draws a third one as well. Yeah, those are five damage Wraths if this, <laughs> this surgery can stick, by the way, but it's not going to stick. Going to be the swipe coming out. There's still four damage if you can pair them with the Fandral, but uh, it's going to be the wild growth here for Leta combining with the swipe, giving initiative back to the opponent, but you know it's a reasonable chance that Chonga doesn't have anything to do considering he is playing the Malagos variant. And wow, okay, just gonna play out the Fandral onto the board. I'm, I can't say, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, puts it back in his hand like, oh, no. with three rats in hand, I feel and like, roots, like, I feel like you can respond to almost anything that comes on the board. And if your Fandral dies, you're gonna be feeling really bad about it. Is this one of those times where you just hero power and pass? Yeah, I feel like that has to be the play. You can just get so much done, you know, coming back onto the board. The problem with giving your opponent initiative normally is that it's hard to come back from the situation. You're always responding. You're always letting your opponent dictate the pace. But with Fandral and Triple Wrath in hand, it's not something you need to worry about, right? You can easily just get back onto the board. And uh, looks like Chonger, he's feels like he just needs to do this right now, though. Yeah, I think he wants to try and get things moving. Not sure what really prompted him to do that. Like, I don't feel like there's much it's, of a hurry. I suppose we can see what prompted him in Leda's hand, right? The <laughs> Wish of the Old Gods, Soul of the Forest, Power of the Wild. Obviously, can't do all of that in one turn, mm -hmm. but maybe Chunger feels like he can't respond to everything with just the Fandro on the double wrath. He needs the Fandro on the board, he needs to stop what Leda's doing okay. right now before it comes out. Would you wish was. Wisp and Power of the Wild here, or? Uh, it's... That is seven two twos. It is seven two twos. That is absolutely correct here. The issue is leaving the Fandral. He can't really deal with the Fandral. He can Savage Roar Living Roots here, Power, but doesn't feel too great. I think he might be waiting for Wisp of the Old Gods with the Soul of Forest, which is impossible to do unless you get Innervate. But, huh. Looks like he's set on playing this Arcane Giant. He's going to go ahead and play Living Roots, but this is really, really going to get punished by the Fandral, like, really badly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Double Wrath just takes that out. So four mana oh, and zero cards. There's four mana and zero cards to take out this Arcane Giant. More than you actually paid for the Arcane Giant. Right. As far as mana is concerned, or excuse me, less, I should say. Uh, math is hard. <laughs> less than more than, or English is hard, I should say. But yeah, easy cleanup on this Arcane Giant. Arcane Giant of his own. Cannot play that right now, but <laughs> might as well just swipe the face, get that pressure in, and show him who's boss. Fandral getting in there for three damage as well. If Leda goes ahead and wisps into the Power of the Wild. Okay, he's just gonna, he was saving for a coin and, and he stole the forest. Oh yeah, he's gonna do it. All right, so I guess, okay, obviously I was mistaken last turn when I said you need to innervate for this. Typically, you don't have coin the entire game. Yeah. But all right, well, okay, let's see. He has seven damage on board, turns into 14 with Power of the Wild, and then added an extra tw uh, 24? Wow. I can't do math. No, I can't do math. Um, <laughs> uh, 14 and then the, the plus 16, so 30. He has 30 damage. So if Chonger <laughs> doesn't hero power up, he's dead. Oh, no. But he also might just have, he might just fail rage here, honestly. So scary. Okay, he might have killed himself, speaking of Chonger. 
<laughs> um, this would be the sickest turnaround. He needs a Dark Rage for armor. Well, I mean, well, he's going to get that anyway because of Fanduel. Yeah. Wait, can, he can now innervate into Arcane Giant, but I think Leda might have lethal here. Hold on. Caster Math is so hard, guys. Okay. Uh, 12 plus 6 is 18. I think that's... And then plus... Um, has he done it already? Leda, show us you have, you've ca counted this already. Uh, 18 plus the 18 7 plus times 2 is 14. 32. So he's... Bit off. Oh yeah, he he doesn't damage. quite have it yet. I don't think Chunga realizes how close he is to dying yeah. right now. Uh, that doesn't help because he's already used five minutes to go ahead and do that. He does have the innervate though, so he does have access to more mana crystals here if he wants it. He's gonna see what he gets here. Oh, another wish of the old gods. Moonplay portal is pretty nice as well. Yeah. The thing is, he's kind of. He's low on health, right? So Yeah, he's yeah. losing his, his uh, win condition, though, by yeah, doing this. True. Because he needs to go ahead and Moonly Portal right now, which means he trades in three Treants into the fan troll. Right. After that, he can... Oh, wow, oh. to Northrend. We're going okay. to Northrend. All right. <laughs> Arjun Commander, to Northrend we go. Can I actually trade off with the... Twist, or excuse me, the sapling as well. Get that extra eight damage into the face, and now he has lethal next turn if this board isn't cleared, but it might be Yogg time. Does Tronger realize if he does, he's probably gonna. He has to suspect, right? Because Leda actually didn't go for the Whisper of the Old Gods the prior turn. Yeah. So here we go. Yogg doesn't even play the Innervate, already has 10 spells. Cleave is a good start. Yeah, he's gonna remove two bodies straight away. Summons some Force. free ends of, of his own. Yeah, this can't. Oh, oh here we go. Wow, Where's he gonna blast? go? Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hunter's Mark doesn't really matter all that much. Journey below, he needs Whoa. to start clearing this fort a little bit, although he might be safe already, having cleared a couple. Yeah. Uh, Power of Glory is reasonable, but doesn't go on the opponent's minion. Gets a couple of secrets, which is scary if you are led up. And uh, by the way, he has De Deathwing in his hand all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, huh. And he can actually innervate into the Power of the Wild, which is very strong as well. He doesn't have any yeah. way to clear parts of this board, so there's no real... I, I suppose he can go innervate into here power if he's feeling really scared right now, but I don't think there's any way that Leda can find lethal. Yeah, there's so few minions on the board, it's, it's basically impossible at this point. So yeah, he's just going to go ahead, speaking of Chonger, he's going to make this board bigger. Leda doesn't have Yogg, which means I think this game is just over. Yeah, how do you come back from a situation like this? There's no lethal, right? Unless, even if there's, you know, the, the secrets don't matter at all. Uh, I don't think there's any. So there's eight on board. You might as well. So eight uh, plus another eight from the Savage Roar would be 16. And then the plus power three. Yeah. So 19. And then plus another six would be 24. Yeah. So he's, or sorry, 25. He's actually kind of close. He's still close, but not just a yeah. little bit off there. Uh, he has to really, oh. Yeah. He knows he was, he, he's out of power. Like, what other win conditions does he really have left in his deck? Yeah, he was counting lethal there at the end and wasn't able to find it, obviously, because it wasn't there. And went ahead and conceded. By the way, I got to say, I was just sweating bullets doing caster math on this. <laughs> this is the worst <laughs> feeling because you know you have to do the math for the people. Yeah. And, oh, God, nothing makes a caster sweat more than, than caster math, guys. Just let me know. <laughs> we got through it, though. We got through yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that was like a really weird game because like both guys were really close to killing each other for the longest time but it never really happened so, so the pressure was really building for the viewers i wonder if charger actually knew how close he was to dying yeah definitely. he must have suspected i do have to i'll, I'll just go out and uh, apologize to the viewers because i didn't really see what leda was doing i was thinking why did he just go for the you know the wish of the old gods plus you know, the power of the wild right there but obviously he had a plan which for the old gods into the soul of the forest into the power of the wild and he was hitting lethal in that fashion so it definitely made sense. Uh, it was a reasonable game plan. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, going for the Arcane Giant that one turn really hurt him. Yeah. And uh, you know, as long as you know, uh, excuse me, Chonger was able to stay alive there, then he's going to be able to finish out the game. One thing to keep in mind: the one thing that makes it actually really smart is that there's no taunts <laughs> in Chonger's deck. Yeah. So without fail rate, he actually just loses. Speaking of Chonger. Very true. Hmm. And also, if. Uh, Lita had managed to get an answer for, for that uh, Fandral a little earlier. Right. You know, all those Rasps wouldn't have gotten those insane values. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he did have, even if he didn't play the Fandral earlier, he did have the ability to go Fandral and Double Wrath. He had nine mana, I believe, and on the turn that the Arcane sure, Jack came yeah. down. Yeah. So Fandral, Double Wrath, Living, I think it would have been pretty insane regardless. 
Uh, but they're... Yeah, I would have. I think it would have ended up the same. Uh, I don't think the chip damage from the from the uh, saplings matter. But anyway, that all aside, we are going to the next game. Pretty insane game one to start out our lower bracket finals, and we'll see what these guys pick up or excuse me, choose next here. Maybe the rogue on the side of Leda, and going to be the Nizah warrior. And the thing is, typically rogue has. A difficulty dealing with the warrior but typically that's because it's Cthulhu warrior right and you get those 10 mana or excuse me those 10 armor swings mm -hmm. with the ancient shield bears but that's not a Chonger's deck so a bit of a better chance here for Leta but there is a bit of a, a counter here in the deck of Chonger and that is the Tink Master Overspark if you ever see a concealed gadget in Auctioneer yeah Tink Master comes down. Even if it's Devil Sword, that's way better than the Concealed right. Action here. Chonger's going to go ahead and quickly fire War Axe. By the way, I believe, if I remember correctly, I think that Chonger and Leta played earlier on in the winner's bracket and Chonger won. Yeah, that would that would have been the round of six, 16. Well, winner, winner round of 16. No, I think, it was, I think it was the semifinals. Because he beat Leta, went to the finals, played Shy, and Leta fell down, and Leta just played. Oh, okay. Right. That makes sense. By the way, it's not turn six yet, but Chonger, having picked up that Justicar too hard, is kind of a big deal because it really puts the clock on Leta. If Chonger can ever develop that minion, then, you know, tank up is no joke. Yeah, but he really, really needs the space to be able to develop that without, you know, it needs to be a pretty clear board for him to feel comfortable enough to play that. Right. So that's why Chonger's going out of his way to clear the board right now. Yeah so that he has the space in the future. But Leta's looking to be in a pretty good spot. By the way, Leta's Rogue doesn't have the Questing Adventures. It has, no. It's kind of an old school build with Vile Teacher and one Earthling Farseer, one yep. each. What do you think the, the reasoning behind that is? Why Is that in any way better than the, the Questing build? The the questing, you can't really play any... You can't play questing on curve. Okay. Right, so you're really all in. It just becomes that much more of a combo deck. Like everything okay. just has to be combo here, combo there. There's no playing on curve. There's no competing with other, any of the tempo decks. So, yeah, it, it certainly makes sense. And it looks like it's going to be second revenge coming out here. No three men, or excuse me, three damage revenge in the future. Going to go ahead and play out the Elise as well. So he has somewhat of a board. Probably going to delay that Justicar a little bit more, uh, you know, whether it's the Cairn next turn or something like Bash. But um, yeah. Leta in an interesting spot right now. He can just go fishing with Kajetan. Uh Would be quite an interesting decision. It looks like he is going to go for it. Doesn't have a dagger set up for the Deadly Poison, though. Chong is already All shaking right. his head. He's like, really? Yeah. You already have it? Of course you have it. Of course you have the uh, coin conceal. One more chance at the conceal here. If not, then it just gets taken out pretty easily. Uh, just gonna pass. Okay, not even gonna go for it. Has a second gadget in, in hand. Barnes is the pickup here. And Chonger. I feel like this, it, as painful as it looks, it's probably gonna be bashing to execute. You wanna save your Ting Master for when there's a concealed gadget in. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. This is the issue with Warrior, though. As as good as a matchup is, you give Rogue a lot of time to uh -huh. set up. And yeah, like turns like these, you're like, okay, well, Rogue, I guess your turn. So <laughs> you don't actually put anything on the board and have anything to respond to. And it looks like, all right, it's going to be setting up the dagger here, attacking phase. Let it realize he needs to get as much damage to the face as possible. Isn't too shy about just attacking the face with the dagger here. Doesn't really care about taking up minions. He can do that with the myriad spells in hand. Oof. Sylvanas comes into the hand, but that would immediately get stabbed. Mm. Probably with the Gadget and Auctioneer. No All right, here we go. Yeah. And this is a problem for... Wow. Oh. Okay. Uh, we're in trouble. The issue for Leta here is that he might not want to play into Brawl. We know yeah. there's no Brawl in Chonger's hand. There's actually two in the deck. And Leta got pretty wrecked by a Brawl earlier on when he was playing against Chonger. I was watching down in the stadium. So 
It doesn't want to repeat that, but at the same time, it's hard not to. It's hard to pass up gadgets in Zap Coin and uh, conceal. All right. Oh, he's gonna go for this. Okay, okay, this makes sense. He says, you know, what? I'm not gonna let you. I'm not, not gonna let you brawl. I don't need to sap this. It's fine. And okay, he's gonna go for the prep Van Cleef conceal. Okay. And I think this is a six six. 8-8, excuse me. Oh, it makes it a 50-50 for the, the Tink Master Overspark there. Right, yeah, Tink Master, whatever it hits is fine. Obviously, wants to squirrel out of it. Oh! Wow, he has the gadgets, and so that's more damage on the field here. Poor Letta, but no draws. <laughs> Gets the Zoth off of it. That being something like... A rag would have been pretty huge. And yeah. conceal number two? All right, he's all in. Oh, he just has lethal. My, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all in into the face, and he has lethal. Okay, my mistake. Oh, man. Yeah, Cast your like, math is hard again. Like you said, the warrior, with, when it's in the Zoth archetype, it just gives his opponent so much time. Even even the death rattle minions like Karen and Sylvanas, they're, they're, they're six drops, but they don't do anything. When, when they're put on the, onto the field, they're such slow cards. It's so hard to, to find a space to really play them and put on any pressure on right. your opponent. Like the rogue can just do, you know, go go forward with their game plan, start start cycling with, with the gadgets, and, and he just had all the cards he needed. Yeah, once, the, the uh, dream hand for the Nazoth warrior is just to have all removal and a couple of minions just in case rogue gives you time. Right. right. If rogue gives you time, you don't want to be sitting there armor passing, but. You want to be able to get something on the field. That aside, you want to have all the removal. Just remove everything you possibly can. Tink Master Overspark was reasonable in that regard, but spent a lot of time doing a lot of, you know, not very efficient things, right? Just revenging onto one minion, things like that. So it uh, didn't work out too well. And his hand was just absolute a nightmare against Rogue, right? He had Cairn, uh, Sylvanas, which is just prime sap targets. Yeah. And... You know, Really nothing to do there for Chonger, but well played by Letta, able to navigate that pretty well and made it so that he really didn't lose to Brawl, right? Brawl wasn't really an answer there. Yeah. No matter what was in the hand, I mean, once it got to the point where the Savannas came out, that was almost game over, right? Because there's nothing really that that Chonger could do. So well navigated by Letta in a matchup that can't always, it's not always that simple. True, true. So both guys are down to the two decks now. Chonger, obviously, still's got that Nazoth War. He's also got a Hunter ready to go. Leda still got that Druid, as well as his own Warrior, actually. What, yeah. What's what, what's up with people choosing to, to ban the Shamans over the Warriors this tournament round? Because I feel like in in the past few months, like banning Warriors ha have been like the go-to for a lot of players. Like, right. what, what caused the switch? Well, the Shaman... Just, I mean, the Shaman can just be problematic with the way that it's built, especially when you're not comfortable playing against it. Mm -hmm. For for a lot of, you know, if you're playing, for instance, as we take a look at the crowd, and it's definitely filled up here with, you know, players and fans alike, as you can see, sitting on these stairs because no real room. But, um, yeah, going back to your question again, <laughs> for the Shaman, I, I think that people aren't as comfortable playing against the mid-range Shaman right now, since it's kind of like hybrid, you know, totems and mid-range, and it can be problematic, especially... For instance, if you are Chonger and you're playing the Warrior, you know, the Midrange Shaman can be problematic because you have to kill all the totem boards. And if you are on the side of Leda, I believe that, let's see, I'm looking at my, oh, the, the uh, Shaman for Chonger was Aggro Shaman, and that okay. really just crushes Rogue. Okay. So I think they're just, you know, lineup specific. Okay. We had a couple matchups yesterday where it was just the standard Warrior fan, so... I don't think it's anything crazy uh, out of the region or anything crazy in the meta in general. Okay. So just intelligent selective banning here from both players. It looks like it's going to be the Nazoth War yet again against that uh, Token Druid. Yep. And this is a pretty reasonable matchup for the Nazoth Warrior. Obviously, it's hard to make meta calls when you don't really see this warrior too often. But mm. uh, it's just in general, the more control star warrior can run the... Druid out of options. It does help for the Druid to have not Yogg, uh, but instead have you know crazy ways to fill the board. One thing to keep in um, consideration here is that Leta needs to space out his boards and make sure that he has the ability to make three massive boards. 
Okay. Right, and there's the possibility of doing that. Uh, you, you know, there's you have the Valt Teacher. You can make a massive board, pile in the wild. Uh, there's the possibility of doing it with Fandral. It's a bit harder though because each card is basically a minion on the board, whereas yeah. that's not necessarily the case with the Valt Teacher. And there's other ways, you know, things like. Uh, Scenarius can help that out. Anixa can help that out. Obviously, Soul of the Forest can help that out. Mm -hmm. And you just need to play around what the options are for removal, right? Because even if you get, for instance, the Wish of the Old Gods into Soul of the Forest, yeah. your opponent can just go Ravage and go Brawl. Yeah. So you need to think about what your opponent has and how how wide you want to go on the board, how much you want to play into Brawl when you don't have a way to refill the board the next turn. And so Leta can do that, but the cards need to come in the right order and he needs to... Read his opponent very, you know, read his opponent correctly, essentially. And if you give your opponent too much time, if you play too, uh, play too patiently, then there's Nazoth with a massive board that you cannot deal with because yeah. you don't have Yogg. So uh, it's up to Leta to, <laughs> to balance, you know, walk toe the line between playing too passively and playing patiently enough that you don't get wrecked by Brawl, essentially. Mm. Yeah, Tronger Hori has both Brawls in hand. A ravaging ghoul as well, so uh, he definitely has the key pieces to try and counter these massive board floods, which Leta Captured is Yormonger is a card we don't quite see very often. Bantry <laughs> Spider is not an option here, most likely. Master Jester usually loses, but you do have an Arcane Giant as well as, excuse me, we have Cenarius and yeah. Onyxia left in the deck, so he could potentially win a Joust. Uh, it might be better to just go for the Yormonger. Nope! Goes for the Master Chouster. I kind of want to get Yormonger on the field. Just <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I like the name too much. I don't know. Raven Owl is <laughs> probably going to be the pick here, by the way. Even more value. Raven Owl off of Raven Owl. Endless value here. More minions. Major Noble Executives. Rag or no balls. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So we. I think it might be Fen Creeper. Uh, Wild Rocker doesn't do a whole lot. So yeah. Going to go with the Fen Creeper. Wrath is reasonable. The healing doesn't really do a whole lot. So yeah. Uh, you know, solid but unspectacular here for Leta. Mm. He definitely wants to try and clear this Fandral. You don't want to let that sit on the field, ready to, to gain more value. Yeah, definitely. There, unfortunately, there's no Could great way to master. deal with it. You can <laughs> go Armor, Shield Slam, Coin Ghoul. Okay. He is going to go for the Tink Master. Yeah, not that many other options, I don't think, but oof. Right. I guess he just really wants to hold on to that coin. Okay. But uh, now he's facing a Devil Sword, so <laughs> 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 that can be problematic. All right, back over to Leta here. And it looks like it's going to be Joust into Wrath. This is kind of a big Joust because Divine Chills are not really easily dealt with. Oh. And he does get the Joust against the Zoth Warrior. Pretty huge there. Again, this is really annoying to deal with as Warrior. Yeah, that Divine Shield is so annoying. You can't just use Ravaging Golem to execute straight on onto it. He could potentially go for Ravaging Ghoul Coin Elise. Okay. Um, he could also go for just Coin Chill Mob, but you don't have any dragons in hand. He doesn't have any dragons in the deck, by the way. So. Yeah. All right. There's going to be just a card. Easy trade here for Leta, but Chonger just saw Wrath, so there's not going to be that sort of punish here. But uh, the obviously, Master Jester can just trade into that pretty easily. There's also the fair weight in hand. Looks like Leta's gonna go for the Nourish, though. As far as damage is concerned, he was somewhat close to just having lethal there. And Soul of the Forest is the pickup. One of the pickups, excuse me, off of the Nourish. Goes ahead and swipes. Leta realizes how annoying this is to get rid of the Divine Shield. And now Chonger is suddenly down to 13. Yeah, looking super close to dead here. Yeah, I would say so. Well, he's got Bash to gain some armor. What is the most he can, what's the way, the, the best he can just get out of, you know, or gain the most life right now? Because Leta has a lot of damage in hand. Mm. He's got Bash, that's three armor plus tank out, that's seven altogether. The thing is, he wants a shield slam. Yeah. So he could bash the Jouster, armor shield slam the Jouster. You're leaving up a Devil Store. We can see in Leta's hand he has Savage Roar. Chonger knows Savage Roar is in the deck. He also knows Feral Rage is in the deck, by the way, so <laughs> he's kind of dead if he doesn't gain a lot of armor and or remove these minions. All right, he's going to go for the safest play here. 
And this is the issue with playing just a car when your opponent has a board. Because all of a sudden you're just playing catch up the rest of the game. The funny thing here is Leta's probably really tempted to go for the massive wide board, but Chonger actually yeah. has the answer for that. He doesn't have an answer for big singular minions, but he has the answer for a wide, wide board. Yeah, Leta's definitely aware of the possibility of brawls, so I, I don't think he's going to spread too wide. Although, that being said... Well, this is this is fine, right? He's saying, you have to brawl this. You yeah. clearly... You just bashed and shield slammed a master jouster. Mm. You're clearly desperate. So... You, you gotta brawl this, buddy. You gotta <laughs> brawl this board. It's not even it's not even you know a token Jude board. It's just kind of like a devil sword that you gave me plus a fen creeper off a of raven idol <laughs> and the mire keeper with the slime. Yeah, you gotta brawl this. And Leta says I got plenty of fuel where that came from. Let's see what survives is the slime. That's the best option, obviously, for Tronger here. This could be a pretty big turning point though, because if he does wisp and soul the forest, like you said, Tronger has a, the perfect counter to it. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see what he decides to go for. Uh, Leta doesn't have the Wild Growth, which surprisingly enough is very nice to have in these sort of situations to pair with the Vile Teacher. Is he going to go with the Vile Teacher anyway, it looks like. And let's see. So he can go for Vile Teacher, Innervate, Soul of the Forest, Giant, or Innervate, Giant Soul of the Forest? Wait, hold on. Caster math is difficult, guys. Hold on. <laughs> He's just going to go straight for soul. Yeah, he has oh, to go okay. for soul first before yeah. he plays the, the giant. But yeah, this is extremely difficult here for Chonger to deal with. All right, very well played here by, by Leta. This is about as annoying as you can get. Mm -hmm. He's gone both wide and tall. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big boy. All right, Chonger. This is difficult. <laughs> this yeah. is a tough situation. How do you get out of this if you are Chonger? Like you brawl, there's still a bunch of minions on the field. Just yeah, I think ruling. that ghoul plus brawl is likely his best chance here. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of has to coin tank up. <laughs> <laughs> so best case scenario, he goes for ghoul brawl and a 2-2 two -two survives, which leaves behind three 2-2s. Two -two and that would be a lot of damage still yeah. on the side of Leta. So he's going to brawl first. I'm not sure if I'd agree with this decision because these 1-1s one are coming back as 2-2s. Two Best yeah. case scenario regardless, though. And I think Leta's just one. Yeah, this is very nostalgic. He has to... He has to brash... Oops, brash. He has to bash coin hero power, I believe. Uh, he might be dead. Okay, he's going up to 20. This is five plus, woo, power of the wild, an extra three. It's going to be eight plus another eight is a 16. That's lethal. Wow, okay. One over lethal. And here it is, let us Pretty sure, unless I've done, unless caster math has ruined me again. <laughs> <laughs> five plus three is eight plus an extra eight plus four. Eight plus eight plus four is 20. All right. He's got it. I think let us just yeah, double just checking and triple checking yep. for and the win here. All right, that's going to be game number three going over to Leta, and he is going to take a 2-1 series lead one game away from going to the grand finals. And the Thai fans certainly have to be happy about this. Yeah, for sure. Just one more win away from going to the grand finals. Aw, oh, man. Leta's heart must be pumping. Well, Although he looks he's pretty calm yeah, and he, cool. He's not showing there. it at all there. I don't know, maybe being uh, in his home country. Some people make makes him more nervous because, like, all of their friends are there and stuff. But maybe for him it's just, you know, a nice comfort zone. He's at home playing a tournament. Nice Life's good easy. right now. Yeah, nice. Right at home in Bangkok. Is he from Bangkok, actually? Or did he? No idea. Oh, we need to look He's that up. He's from Thailand. He's Thailand's from Thailand. Thailand. <laughs> Thailand's actually a pretty big country by area. But, yeah, doing his country proud. And he is one game away from that Grand Finals. And in the Grand Finals, anything can happen. And he could potentially take down $2,500 grand prize, which would add to his coffers because he's already going to the APAC championships. Could be a pretty big year here for Leto. What if he just wins BlizzCon? Damn. That would be <laughs> he's in the amazing. Running. Yeah. He's in the running. <laughs> so I want to see him do it with this Druid as well. Yeah. Who needs Yogg, right? Yeah. No big deal. <laughs>
But we saw how annoying that is, and uh, you know, maybe I made a mistake in as far as you know calling or not calling the match, but like you know saying maybe the the warrior is favored. Uh, looking at that situation right there, it's you know we just saw that Chang was on the back foot the entire time, so maybe time to recalibrate that. I mean, Leta looks like he knows exactly how to play that mat that matchup out. Like he he took into account two brawls, you know, the possibility of ravaging ghouls. Right. Like I think a lot of lesser experienced players with that deck would have just gone. You know, Wisps, Soul of the Force, been yeah, like, haha, I got you, and then just gotten totally wrecked. Yeah, and went for the most annoying situation possible. And it looks like we're going to game number four. Let's see if Leta can take it, or if Chonger is going to force a game five. Leta going to be piloting the Warlock and going to go off against the Hunter. Looks like Chonger is not going to be wasting anyone's time here. Going for the worst matchup right off the bat. Let's see if he can't just pick it up. Okay. I like his style. Well, at least like if he does win this slightly unfavorable matchup, he can, you know, be very comfortable in that in that last uh, fifth game, being like, you know what, I overcame came the the bad matchup and just, you know, now now I'm in my safe zone. Now now I'm more a little bit more comfortable. Confidence rises. And yeah, absolutely. And it obviously puts the pressure on his opponent as well. Yeah. Let's talk about Leta Zoo for a little bit. You casted it last series, but it's kind of like a Shaman, right? The bit of uh, flavors from each kind of archetype, his Shaman was a mid-range, but did have the, the Thunder Bluff in there, whereas his mm -hmm. Zoo has one Sea Giant, one Malchazar's Imp, one Soulfire, two Doom Guards, and one Forbidden Ritual. So it, more or less a standard Zoo, but a little bit of a discard Zoo log flavor in there. Yeah, he hasn't gone all the way with, with the discard. I feel like that's something that happens quite often when a new like kind of mechanic enters a deck archetype. People go all the way. Like when Cthune came in, you know, with with the, with the patch, everyone was just going full on Cthune, and then it turned out actually you don't need to put that many Cthune buffing minions in, in your in your deck to make it optimal. Right, just two Cthune cards. Oh, we activated it. Yeah, <laughs> we activated exactly. All our crazy cards, and Cthune isn't really the card you're wanting to buff. You want to get up to just that 1010. Yeah. And make sure your other cards are a bit more. Valuable there. By the way, Chonger with that Direwolf Alpha in the hand. That is the one Direwolf Alpha in his deck. So somewhat okay that he's picked it up, but double kill command is certainly not very good for him at all. I think he picked up the Kindly Grandmother off the top so there, so mm. uh, at least he's got that going for him. Well, I mean, the kill command might actually come in handy here if the Dark... The, the councilman yeah. gets played down. I, I highly doubt that's going yeah. to be the case. I think that Letta's either going to be going for... It, there's going to be some sort of Void Walker coming out here. Sure. And uh, he might be proving me wrong, but wow. <laughs> hopefully not. We'll see. I think it might be Coin Dark Peddler into... Oh, no, he's just going to go for right now. I suppose he feels like if the Kill Command comes out, there's no way to buff the Kindly Grandmother to trade into the Imp. So, you know, if you're Chonger here, you're damned if you, damned if you don't kind of situation. Yeah. All right, so. Oh. Wrong. Certainly, it makes sense in some regard. Yeah, I mean, Kill Command is not really a card that your opponent's really looking to keep in their hand, so. Right. And Chonger's going to go ahead and go face with his Kindly Grandmother. Does pick up the Quick Shot, which... Again, you don't really want to have against Zoo, but in the situation where he's a bit behind, it could help out. All right, triple one drop looks like the play here. Probably going to see, yeah, the Flame Imp. And this is as annoying as it gets for the Hunter. Yeah, the double three health taunt is so hard to break through. And it's really awkward to play Unleash the Hounds as well. Like, four bodies is nice. I feel like we're... Like you're on four mana. You're like, you definitely don't want to be playing that. I feel like one side of this board is 2013. One side is is uh, 2016. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, the Karazhan cars. Oh yeah, it turns out that just Flame Imp and Void Walker just killed that guy. So, Leto with an interesting read here. Chonger decided to go phase last turn with the kind of grandmother. And that showed him, by the way, Barnes. Let me just stop for Barnes here for a second. And I uh, guess, a, you know, Fiery Bat, not too bad. But yeah, Leta was concerned about Chonger being able to buff his minion there. He knows that Chonger has the Abusive Sergeant in the deck. Right. Alright, so Leta going to play out all of his minions here, I would imagine, before he Doom Guards next turn. Will only discard one card. Uh, the question is, oh, what to pick here? All these are pretty reasonable. 
If he kills everything but the Barnes and plays Corruption on Barnes, then it just dies for a Voidwalker, which is reasonable, but he could just play another Voidwalker. Young Priestess is not too bad either. Yeah, All right. I think he's going to go trade into the Barnes and play the Voidwalker, though. Okay. And plays the good ordering here, plays the other Voidwalker first. So that the spit, if it hits the Voidwalker that hits the field, their situation. But I think this is the turn that Chong was looking for. Going to be Unleash, Dire Alpha, I think almost certainly. Oh, yeah. And I think he just clears the board here. So hold on. Uh, Unleash, he plays Dire Alpha, Alpha. 3 1 goes into the 1 3 Voidwalker. Uh, Hound goes into each of the other ones. He's left with a 2 1 Hound and has the board. So, wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Zoo is looking pretty good this entire game, but all of a sudden, this turn is going to be pretty nasty. Yeah, what a great swing turn here. Uh, what is he What is he considering? Maybe just figuring out the ordering there. Right. You want to keep the town on the left alive, because anything that summons goes on the right side. But uh, Power Overwhelming, not too bad to throw away here. I think Lena's playing one Power Overwhelming. Yeah, I kill off the Dire Elf Alpha, but that means that Kill Command kills it off. All of a sudden, Chonger's looking in great spot right now. He even has the huge Toad. Even though it's off curve, you do want to play the huge Toad here. The Eaglehorn, oh, Eaglehorn Bow excuse me, has charge, essentially. So, yeah, complete turnaround. And, yeah, Chonger's completely in the driver's seat. Before for mid ridge off the top. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it's probably going to be Knife Juggle into. But Pella really needs to hit this. Snipe onto the doggy, to the hound. Soulfire is pretty Soul nice here. Yeah. Ooh, juggles with his face though. And Chonger, he can actually start counting lethal damage here pretty soon. Oh, not lethal, but uh, just have his opponent's situation where he can't recover really, especially with tapping all the time. But I'm not even gonna consider it, really. <laughs> it's gonna go and clear. It. Go ahead and clear the board. And yeah, this is pretty unrecoverable here, Meta. Oh, yeah, and <laughs> that oh, no. draw doesn't help at all here. Still got the light up, but it brings him down to... <laughs> oh, no! Oh, okay. oh, geez. One of the only unplayable cards. <laughs> Into, yeah. Well, high main or end companion, oh. both pretty reasonable right now. At 21 life, though, you're pretty happy. Just throwing down that high main. Yeah. That's, getting that hit in. That's the nail in the already closed coffin yeah. <laughs> of light up. GG, Chonger forces a game number five with his Hunter. And now we got a showdown between the Warrior and that Zoo. Chonger, both these players looking completely composed and just calm out here. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what's allowed them to, to get this deep in the tournament, not letting the pressure phase them, just to be able to, in, to, be, to get into the zone. And um, yeah, we saw Gogong earlier, the, our Korean player just Wearing his emotions yeah. on his sleeve maybe didn't help out in the end for him. Yeah, it might, it, it might just be a person-to-person -person thing, though. Like, inside Leta could be like, oh, oh, my God, I'm so nervous. Oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, like, he's no, just he's good, really he's good, good at hiding it. He'd be a good poker player then, actually. Certainly. Well, we are going to the game number five uh, when these players are ready. Going to be the Warrior, the Nazoth Warrior. And by the way, Chonger's already lost twice with that deck. Could it be his downfall here? It's actually been banned in the past. Maybe that's why you don't ban Warrior, right? You just win against it. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, it's also one of the lesser seen Warrior deck archetypes. Yeah, it's probably like number six or seven on the list. Right, Like, and that, there's probably a reason for that. Um, but, I mean, apparently Chonger is extremely confident in it because he did bring it to this tournament. So, um, who knows? Yeah, it's an interesting, you know... Interesting the way he constructed the deck, right? Because you can tell he, there's a lot of defense in the deck. He has double infested Torin, right? In order to make sure that when he puts up the you know Nazoth, that he gets those double taunts up, as well as the chill mode, which has no dragon so activated in the deck. It's just seven mana six six with the death rattle. But uh, here we go, game number five. This is for all the marbles as far as going to the grand finals is concerned. Loser is out in third place in this tournament, and. As is customary with the zoo hand, the zoo starting hand, it's perfectly balanced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, I wasn't making any balance issues, by the way. I was making the issue, the uh, argument that it just goes right perfectly, you know, curving into what he wants. 
And just gonna get out the Void Walker right now. There is the argument sometimes. For instance, I know that Firebat likes to go for one drop into coin three drop. Mm -hmm. uh, but Leda's just gonna go for one coin one into two into three. And when your opponent does uh, Fire War X, feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, Trigon was definitely looking to draw that right there. And fortunately, Chilma is what he drew, not what he's looking for at all. Yeah, the last card. That is. That is just Nazoth fuel. Right? Yeah, you're not, much. you're not even wanting to play it on turn seven, really. No. All right, well, Ooh. Chonger in a bit of trouble here. If he plays the Acolyte, he's going to get value traded on with the Flame Mint, but it seems like he really needs that card, at least his, in his estimation. Uh, Leta needs to trade first, yes. <laughs> All right, gonna play the Inking boss rather than the Dark Shark Councilman. Maybe looking to, to swing with the, the Imp Gang boss after he summons the Dark Shark ne next turn or something, but. Right. Well, Chang'er picks up the Revenge, but that's not going to be too useful. And you don't really want that to be useful yeah. <laughs> this early in the game. I mean, you know, a, a one damage whirlwind effect is pretty, still pretty nice. Could potentially, you know, partially clear the board of Leda eventually. And right now, not that useful though. Especially with that Imp Gang boss ready to go. Yeah, Chang'er has a few options here. He can go for the Infested Torrent. He can go for Execute Bash, which is not the worst. It seems weird on a Flame but there's not that many minions you want to execute anyway. And he can also go for Barnes and hope he gets something like an Infested Torrent or a Cairn or a Rag. And goes with the Infested Torrent in the end. Goes for the consistent play. Yeah. Well, he just wants to put something on the board which his opponent has to trade with. And Leda has to be thinking about Brawl right now. Mm. So yeah, that's why you see the tap here. It's very tempting. You, you look at both hands and you're like, why doesn't he just go for Dark Shark Councilman and Flame and all this noob? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's certainly considerations for Brawl here. And I, yeah, I imagine we're going to see a trade with the Void Walker rather than the Flame Imp. Or excuse me, the Imping Boss. All right, so Shocker's okay. position hasn't really improved. Fortunately for him, no. Uh, it could be just honestly, he might just want to ex tempo execute pretty soon here, just to get some pressure off of him. Mm -hmm. So I, I think execute Barnes is fine. I think execute Bash is fine. I think I'd rather have Barnes though because you want to be playing on curve as much as possible, getting the most out of your cards next turn can be just double bash. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking at this, I think I'd like the execute Barnes, but he disagrees. Just gonna go with Bash and armor up. Okay. This might be a bluff that he has Brawl, saying, it's, it's like, you think that I have Brawl and I'm actually doing this in order to bait you into Brawl. <laughs> so like a two-layered two mind game there. Exactly. I, I think that might actually be what he's thinking right now. And look, later he's yeah. going to tap. So wow. yeah, bit afraid of Brawl here. Playing it very conservative. <laughs> but he's still going to get six damage, or excuse me, seven damage to face here. So, you know... <laughs> I don't know how much it works, quote unquote, here for Chong. <laughs> right. I mean, he slowed him, his opponent down a little bit, but is it going to be enough? Is the question. Another infested torrent there. It will put something. It's reasonable for the Nazoth eventually, but yeah. But right still now four you're four turns away from it. Yeah. Right now you're playing a four mana two three. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Not, not not too great. You don't even want to play a two mana two three. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. River Clockless followed by a slime. I'll pass. <laughs> Without the beast synergy. <laughs> All right, so Chonger is feeling the pressure here, going to actually commit to one of the executes. So the bash. The issue with the bash is you want to take the damage right now. You know that Leta's not going to commit to the board. You want to just take the damage, or at the very least, prevent your opponent from actually attacking you yeah. to prevent them, prevent you go from going into revenge range. Right now, Leta can just attack with everything, and he's not going to get Chonger in range. And eventually, he'll just have lethal like through the 12 damage. Uh huh. So. You know, using Bash, Chang'er almost wishes that he didn't get the armor here, strangely enough. So many or maybe just bank the armor and get it later or something like that. <laughs> if you could invest that armor in some stocks, you know, yeah. maybe get, get that back later once it's grown. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 5.1 armor. <laughs> well, considering the market, he'll, he'll probably <laughs> lose, lose all of it. Oh, feels bad, man. <laughs> Huh. Okay, I was gonna say, it's 
one thing to play around Brawl, it's another thing to just not tap. All right, so it's going to be the Dark Iron Door playing on the left side and down to exactly 13 here. This is what I was mentioning. Letta playing around that revenge and Chonger shuffles in his chair a bit saying, 13, really? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this 2-1 Voidwalker has been alive for the longest time. <laughs> that 2-1 Voidwalker has gotten in for 6 to 8 damage. This is why, guys, I probably some of you guys in the chat were like, ah, why, what is he talking about executing a 2-1? But this is the, exactly the reason why you go for a type of execute sometimes. Like, like it's probably going to be Infested Torn into Execute. That's how he's played this game so far. Yeah. After investing in that slam. And uh, he thinks he's dead. Chonger calls up the well played. And is he dead is the question. Uh, three, five, seven. And yeah, I think he's dead. I think he's dead. Abuse of Sergeant on to the Possessed Villager in. Tax with everything places the Doom Guard next to the Dire Wolf oh, Alpha. Wow. That is exact lethal here for Leta. He is moving on to the Grand Finals to face off against Shy and the Grand Prize Money. Well played by Leta. And the Thai fans are going nuts right now. Look at him. Come on. You can smile, man. Let I, you can do it. Looks, he <laughs> looks a little, little embarrassed, Steven. He's like, oh, what did I do? I did it? <laughs> yeah. Chong, unfortunately, will go home in third place. But Letta, again, moving on to the grand final, he's like, where's my money? <laughs> where's my opponent? I'm going uh, to kill Shy right uh, now. Ah, there we go. There we go. I think it's <laughs> finally hit him. He's like, okay, all right. I did pretty good, didn't I? Yeah, I did. did pretty good. By the way, they are playing for that key on the, the stage there. The Light Force key, obviously, the 12th win arena key. Yeah, this is our crowd here. We are actually up there in those, those shining lights, <laughs> as <laughs> you can see in the background. Um, kind of hard to, to wave to them because it's so bright. But uh, yeah, we're having a lot of fun here. Definitely led a impressive so far. Yeah. Make sure to, to tweet and cheer him on. At, uh, I believe we're using the hashtag. <laughs> yeah, of course. I believe it's, it's Hearth SEA Major. That's right. Let us know who you want to win in the finals because that's where Leta is going against Shy. And it looks like we do have a replay for you guys from that match. Ex just kidding. No replay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Just, but just keeping the viewer viewers on their toes, you know, seeing if, seeing if you're listening. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, we are going to go to a break, and after that, we're going to come back with the grand finals, potentially two more best of fives if Leta wins. Otherwise, we'll have Shy being the grand champion. Stay tuned, guys.